I hope you're looking forward to this as much as I am. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is May 22nd. It is Wednesday. Now, I'm going to invite you to my live streaming event tomorrow. Not that it's a special occasion or anything. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host go on live for about an hour and a half. We're there giving you, the investors, an opportunity to share hot penny stocks with us. No, not just me and Taylor. I mean, everybody that watches the video. The more people that know about it, the more people you can get investing in it. I share hot penny stocks with you all week. This is your opportunity. Now, to be completely fair with you, if you drop your ticker during the show, I'm not going to be able to get to it. See, I've got a policy of first come, first served. And I drop an announcement about this live streaming event earlier in the day so that people know what's going to happen and they can show up. Well, as soon as I do that, tickers start coming in. Well, by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I got enough tickers on my plate that I can't squeeze any more in. So, if I don't look at your ticker during the show, I apologize. But I'm saying all that to let you know, if you really want me to look at your ticker, wherever you follow me, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, when you see my announcement dropped, get in there. Drop your ticker then. Guaranteed, it'll get looked at. Plus, it'll give me more time to go over the information. That's 4 o'clock, Thursdays, every Thursday. So, what we like to do on this show is focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day from bell to bell. I am constantly looking for stocks under five bucks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. And this week, we've been doing pretty good. We looked at Ron, ticker R-O-N-N. -N. The very next day, she had an early surge going well over 100% before she came back down. Yesterday, we looked at Syata, ticker S-Y-T-A. Now, I was real confident this was going to run strong today. I even gave you three price targets. We were down at 230. My highest price target was four bucks. Well, she hit it today. Pre-market, she was hot. She ripped really early before she came back down. So, we are doing pretty good finding hot penny stocks. Maybe we got lucky again. Luck my butt. You know how I find these folks? I look at the charts. A hot chart matched with a hot piece of news is a hot penny stock. So, I look at the charts first and then go looking around the press releases and the filings and that's how I'm finding all these stocks. And we got another one to look at today. This is Sun Power Corporation, ticker SPWR. And she's got all those telltale signs I was just talking about. She's got a hot chart. That's what caught my attention first thing this morning pre-market. She had some really big news today. And I think the news is going to carry her even farther. So, SPWR, Sun Power, she finished today at $3.13. She was up just a little over 14% and jumped up almost 40 cents today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. You got to love penny stocks on the major exchange because they come with benefits. First off, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees on the major exchanges. Plus, you get to take advantage of pre-market, after-market periods to trade. You don't need any special qualifications or training or permissions. Just get in there and trade. I'm telling you folks, some of the biggest bounces I see are pre-market. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchanges. That's where you want your stocks to be. And last but not least, there's a lot more rules and oversight on the major exchange which just makes it safer. You don't have to put up with all that BS we do down on the OTC. So, what is Sun Power Core about? Well, the company is a solar power company. No big surprises about what they do. They just do a lot of different things that a lot of companies only do individually. Like the company sells solar panels and install them. They've got companies that do that. They put in power banks so that you can capture all of that energy and store it. You've got companies that just do that. They do a lot of different things that all work in synergy and the company is huge. Sun Power is a leading residential solar technology and energy service provider in North America. They are doing business in all 50 states. Sun Power offers solar and storage solutions designed and warranted by one and the same company. And with nearly 40 years of dedicated solar experience, 
This is the only US-based solar company that's been around longer than their 25-year warranty. Wow, 25-year warranty. That is a huge warranty, folks. And it's nice to know the company's been around for 40 years. You know, a company that's been around for five years and gives you a 25-year warranty, it may not be worth anything more than it's written on, right? So they have their own solar panels. They've created these. They've made them high efficient. They like to brag about them. They install them themselves on homeowners' roofs. Individuals, they're not working with businesses. They're working with residential. Once they get them all installed, you hook up to their app. Now, this is cool. You not only see how much energy you're using, but how much you're making. And you can actually work around this. You can strategize your energy. I like that. As I said, they also work with the storage units. The company's been around for 40 years and they've been selling solar panels all that time. Well, we've just gotten into solar banks just here in the last couple of years. Well, they were real smart. They just went back and rehashed with all their old customers and said, how would you like to store the power that you're creating rather than just getting to use what you're using and giving away the rest to the utility companies for pennies? Everybody's liking that. More than half of their customers, more than half, have taken them up on the storage unit. And that's how they make their money. They rehash their old customers. They're always bringing in new customers, but they've got a huge bed of old customers that they can work with. And all of this is being warranted by that 25-year warranty. Now think about that, folks. How many other products do you know have a 25-year warranty? I mean, seriously, does your car or your house come with it? Heck no. How about your teeth? You get a cat put in there. I'm going to have these teeth all my life. 25 years is only part of it. Can I get a 25-year guarantee on my cap? No. I can only think of one other product, I'm sure you can think of one or two, that has a 25-year warranty, and it too is on the roof. Shingles. That's, that's really an amazing thing to think about, folks. We're talking shingles, solar panels, up on the roof, and all the elements in dead sunlight every single day, every month, every year, and they're giving these things 25-year warranties. You think they're durable? <laughs> now, because we are talking residential business and not corporations or enterprises, money is always a factor. So they do all of their own financing. They've got lots of flexible finance, and you can even get into this with zero down. Now, they've got everything going on here except one thing. They don't have any way to charge EVs, and that's the next step in progression. You're gathering energy, you're storing energy, you're using it on your home. Wouldn't you like to drive for free? That's what it comes down to, right? Well, that's what the news is today. They have added this product to their portfolio, but there's more to the news than just that. All right, so now that you got an idea what the company does, let's go take a look at the stock and that news. So the relative volume for the company today with that big news, what did we get? Whoa, we got a jump. I'd say about five times her normal volume going from about 11 million shares a day over the last 30 days to over 63 million shares today. Share structure for the company. Oh, please be decent. That's decent. I'm not going to cry about it. It's high, but not too high. Outstanding share count is at 175 million. Now, I have no clue what the float is. They don't even tell us what the restricted shares are. Restricted shares are the shares the insiders, the management own. Same kind of shares we own, not preferred or restricted, same common shares. I would just subtract that from the outstanding share count and that would tell me the flow. All I can tell you is it's not going to be any higher than the outstanding share count and it won't be any lower than a million, which is the absolute lowest it can be on the NASDAQ. So somewhere between a million and 175 million. It's a lot of playroom. Market cap, we are closing in on a half billion dollars on this penny stock. Taking a look at the financials for the company. Well, we're not used to seeing this on penny stock. She's hitting the billions of dollars now. Back in 2021, we were at 863 million. We know these are millions and billions because they tell us we got to add three more zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. She has been growing since 2021, jumping to 1.1 billion, 
1.7 billion and she did pull back just a little bit here at the end of 2023. I also noticed that they have changed the end of their fiscal year. It used to be January, it is now December. I also see that they took a big drop in their profits here. They were climbing in profits. They dropped $50,000 from uh, January 2023 to here. There's a $50,000 difference, and yet we lost about $170 million? Wow. I'd have to do some research and find out what happened there. Quarterly reports. Looks like they're averaging about $450 million every three months though they dropped about 80 million this last quarter. And wow, look at this. Their profits are dropping every single quarter. Even though they were pretty much sticking around the same revenues, they were losing money on profits. And now they're down to 10.9 million, falling from 72 million. Something's going on here. Not quite sure what it is, but something is going on here. More due diligence, that's what we need. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. I'm curious now. Cash in the bank, don't forget those three zeros. Oh, they got a lot of money in the bank, don't they? $89 million in the bank. You don't keep all that in one bank. <laughs> Total assets, woo, we're up there at $1.3 billion. Total liabilities, that too is over a billion, but there is leftovers. We've got just over $300 million in stockholder equity. I was going to say deficit. We're used to saying that word. No, we've got $305 million in stockholder equity in this company. Strong revenues, though they are losing money for some reason. Profit, that is. They're not taking in as much profit. But they are taking in profit. They are taking in strong revenues. And they got positive stockholder equity. Diving into those disclosures now. We do have a few of them that came out this month. We got a couple of Form 4s. Form 4s can be good news. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. It's the same stock you and I buy. Well, they can get these or get rid of them in a lot of different ways. We're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. That's not the case with either one of these Form 4s. The important one here is this NT10Q. That is an abbreviation for we are not filing our quarterly financials on time. They're late. Now, this bought them an extra five days of grace period. They filed this on the 13th. They should have had them out by the 18th. This is the 22nd. They are late. One of these 8Ks is a notification from the NASDAQ. They've taken notice that they're late. They told them you better get them in ASAP. But the NASDAQ isn't taking any action against the company yet. Then there was one other 8K. They tell us here that on April 21st, the company adopted a restructuring plan intended to further advance efforts to reduce operating costs. They're trying to save some money and improve the economics of the business. The company expects to incur restructuring charges totaling approximately $28 million. They got to spend $28 million to start saving money. Oh my God, they better be saving a heck of a lot more than $28 million. Now that $28 million isn't going for fees or to some organization. It's going to people in two different categories. Approximately $14 million in severance benefits. This is for their employees. And approximately $14 million related to early contract termination. I got to believe that's management. So they just cut a lot of people out of their company. And they're going to be making or saving more than $28 million doing it. Fingers crossed. All right, let's take a look at the news now. Well, it doesn't come up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There was actually only one piece of news that we needed to look at, and it is the news that came out today. SunPower adds Tesla Powerwall 3 to its portfolio. SunPower, America's highest rated residential solar energy company, Today announced it will now be offering Tesla Powerwall 3 as part of its curated portfolio of high quality and affordable solar and storage products. Homeowners are increasingly turning to battery storage to protect themselves against ongoing utility rate hikes and grid outages. We witnessed record-breaking battery storage sales in 2024. It's still 2024, so they must be kicking butt right now. 
and we see a future where almost all solar systems are paired with storage. That just makes sense to me. Pairing Tesla Powerwall 3 with our industry-leading SunPower Equinox Solar Power System was a natural progression in offering homeowners the best products on the market. And we're right back to where we started from. All they got to do is go back to any of their customers <laughs> in the last 40 years. If any of them have got an EV, you think they're going to want this? If any of those customers are thinking about getting an EV, do you think they're going to want this? That is a lot of business they're going to get just off the bat before they even start getting new customers. So having this product with their storage banks, with their solar, and being in all 50 states, I think this is a hot opportunity. And the chart looks hot too. Let's go take a look at it now. Now we get to do the best part of due diligence, the charting. We're looking at SunPower Corporation, ticker SPWR, on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got it opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. And as you can clearly see, she's been in a downtrend the entire year. We had an impressive 52-week high in July of last year of $12.18, and in April, we hit a low of $1.77. Now, if you break out your magnifying glass and look real close, you can see over the last year, the volume has been increasing ever so slightly. But over the last couple of weeks, we've had days of some explosive volume. And it seems to be happening as this 200-day SMA is getting closer. And right there is the true token sign. We had this big spike break through the 200 and spit this wick out way high. The next bar did not come down any lower than where that rip started from. In my opinion, I see this as a token sign she is going to start to climb and run. When is she going to do it? When that 200-day SMA gets flat. When it goes level, she is helping it to go level by putting that spike up there. The higher she gets the price, the more it tugs that 200-day SMA until it's flat. She creates her own opportunity. So she did fall back down. No lower than where she started. So now I'm all eyes. I'm watching. She continued falling. That's okay. I'm only watching it now, waiting for the opportunity. She has bounced off the 50-day SMA, put herself back on top of the nine, and she is pushing towards that 200-day SMA, which is starting to level out more and more. All of our oscillators are climbing, every single one of them. The one-year chart looks really good. Take a look at our six-month, four-hour view. That's a serious downtrend, no doubt about it. Now, she did have a breakout here. Shouldn't have because that 200-day SMA is not level. There is still a lot of decline on this. But she was up there for about a month. When she finally let go, she was at like $4.70 and fell down to $2.70. That was a $2 drop there. She then ran back to that 200 thinking she could do it all over again. But again, this is just too steep. She shot way up there and came way back down, right back up underneath the 200 and fell all the way down to that low bubble. Now, dare I say, off of this low bubble, we have had a trend change. We were underneath every single SMA here. She worked away on top of the 50. Then on top of the 200, and that was it. The trend has changed. She jumped here from about $2.30 up to $7.50. That's well over 300% run. Yes, she did come all the way back down to the 200, but this time she's on top of it. She was underneath the 200 for a very long time. Now she's on top of it. She came down to that 200, Bounced off of it, she was underneath all the SMAs except the 200. She has now gotten on top of all of the SMAs and is actually pushing away from them all right now. She is in the midst of a new surge, a new climb right now. Now, do the oscillators back me up on that? Well, we've got an imminent crossover on our PPO. You read this the same way you read the MACD. The difference between the two is the MACD uses the full price and the PPO, which stands for Percentage Price Oscillator, works with a percentage of the price. And our RSI is still going sideways with just ever so slight incline right now. It is just starting to push up. I like the four-hour chart too. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. 
Well, this is a little better. She is actually on an uptrend now, right? We were in a downtrend. You can see our 200 here was falling, went totally flat right here. Price floated over it, and right at this jump, she's tugged on that 200-day SMA. She's got it climbing. She's falling back down onto this 200-day SMA, and she is using that as her springboard. She's bounced off at once. She's come back down. Now, I can see she has gotten right about in the middle here, which means she doesn't look like she wants to fall. She's hanging on to most of her gains, looking like she wants to continue climbing. All of our SMAs are pushing up, and they're all about ready to cross this 200 haul. This is looking strong, too. Let's see what our oscillators say. All right, these are the coolest that they've been. There is just a hint of all the oscillators coming down, which is expected, right? We had a lot of pull down right here, even though it's leveling off on top of our nine-day SMA. But what looks good is our RSI. She was falling. She hit the cusp of the bottom of the bowl here, and she is starting to come back up right now. Let's come on down to that five-day, five-minute. Woo! Lots of volatility. We were at $4.46 five days ago, hit that low of $2.62, and right now we're at $3.13. I see she had a big rip early in the morning. She's come back down, and now she's going sideways, but she's way above her 200 and there's no SMA here. Now, could we get a support? Let's see if we can grab a resistance in here. Nope, she's not on that, is she? Let's see if we can get another one. Uh, maybe here? Ah, there we go, right there. We've got a support. Now, I would have gone back to my 15 minute to see, oh, well, there too, right? There, she's on her 50 day, actually more so than that support. The support stopped her. She went sideways waiting for that 50-day SMA, and she is rolling with that 50-day right now. She is ricocheting off of it. All of our oscillators on our 15 minutes say exactly that. Everything is cusping around and starting to climb right now. I really like the charts, folks. I like the one-year, the four-hour, the one-hour, the 15-minute, the five-minute. They all look good to me, folks. I think this company has a good chance of running in the short run. We are talking about day trades here, but I'm hoping you're going to do some more research, folks. There is more to know about this company. I believe they do have more products than just the ones I mentioned. SPWR looks good for a run to me, but do your own DD. Don't just count on what I said. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.